And now, another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. In a moment, End of the Road. Written for radio by Alan Sloan. From a story by Eliezer Lipsky. Back in pioneer days, they used to talk about the quick and the dead. The idea used to be the quick survived and the slowpoke stopped an arrow. Well, today things have changed. On America's highways, it's often the quick who are the dead. Haste makes considerably worse than waste, as highway fatality statistics grimly prove. Most highway deaths come from excessive speed and cutting out of line. It's possible to be killed by making a target of your car as well. It's possible to get into trouble by having a mechanically imperfect car. There are all sorts of dangers involved in piloting one of today's high-speed automobiles. But hundreds of thousands of drivers of all ages are proving that it's also possible to have an accident clean record. Alertness, politeness, yes, common courtesy on the road, and a flexibility about changing highway conditions, these are true driving skills. These are the keys to accident-free driving, your only guarantees of survival on the rugged roads of today. Hello. Mary Gardner, please. This is her husband. Who is calling? This is the agency, Mr. Gardner. Well, just a minute. It's for you. Sounds like a job. Thanks, Willie. Hello? At 2 p.m., high fashion. What's the matter? They will find My name George. ain't good enough for a cover girl, huh? Head and shoulders. But would What's you the matter? Are you ashamed of me? Preferably dark. The guard. The short Mary God. Preferably you dark. You mean Mary Luciana. I'm well coming along this time of year. I am. All right? Here. 2 p.m., elite. Hey, Dinner dress. You hear me? You... And as long as I have you, Miss Gardner. Uh, just a moment, please. Willie, please. Please. I said I am going with you. Willie, can you wait till I finish this call? Go ahead. I got all the time in the world, but I am going with you. You hear? Miss Gardner? Yes. Yes. Was there something else? Yes. Uh, we just got a mother and daughter call for tomorrow. That'd be 11 o'clock in the park. Could you make that with Elsie? With 11 o'clock? Oh, dear, no, Elsie's in school, then. And... It'd be double rate for the girl, Miss Gardner, and it might make a cover. It's mother and daughter outfits, Hannah Troy. I'm sorry. I don't want to take Elsie out of school. Thank you. Now, are we going to get this straightened out once and for all? Willie, please. I've told you so many times I'm not ashamed of your name. I wouldn't have married you if I were. Then why don't you keep the kid registered Elsie Luciano instead of Elsie Gardner? Because we worked together as models as Gardner before you and I were married. Ah. Please, Willie, I get so bored going over this again and again and again. And quit, then quit. If I did, you'd have to go to work. Are you going to throw that in my face again? Did I try for a job? Did I? Yes. All right, all right. Don't give me no butts. I do all right, don't I? I bring the dough home, don't I? But where does it come from, Willie? I bring it in, don't I? What do you care where? Oh, Willie, can't we just drop the whole thing? Where's my bag? I've got a 2 p.m. I've got a 2 p.m. Now, listen. You mean we got a 2 p.m. I'm coming with you. Not in a high-fashion job. Oh, 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 a low-fashion job. I could come along, huh? And watch them photographers pour you around. Give it a little pat here, a little pat there. Willie, I'm warning You're you. You're warning me. You're warning me. Now, look, cover girl, I got a message for you. Willie, let go. You'll bruise my arm. <laughs> I get a kick out of you. Not to, you're hurting me, but you'll bruise my arm. That's all you care about, ain't it? Your looks. Okay. Okay, if I don't go, you don't go. Willie, let go. Sure, I'll let go. <laughs> With one right in the eye, I'll let go. <laughs> Let's see him focus on that, huh? Cover girl with a shiner. Oh, Willie, you... You bitch. Sure. You said that's what got you about me. When I met you, remember, you said I was an animal. A magnificent animal! <laughs> How's that, Mrs. Luciano? How's that? <laughs> In just a moment, 
we will return for the second act of Suspense. Here's Hollywood star Mona Freeman. Who feels like acting with a miserable cold? I relieve cold distress the fast way, with four-way cold tablets. Yes, tests of all the leading cold tablets proved four-way fastest acting. Amazing four-way starts in minutes to relieve muscular pains and headache, reduce fever, calm upset stomach, also overcomes irregularity. When a cold strikes, do what I do. Take four-way cold tablets. It's the fast way to relieve nasty cold distress and feel better quickly. Four-way, only 29 cents. Our program will continue in a moment after a word about another fine product of Grove Laboratories. Does dandruff dull your hair, leave scalp itchy? Get Fitch Dandruff Remover Shampoo and get rid of unsightly dandruff in three minutes. Three minutes with Fitch regularly is guaranteed to keep embarrassing dandruff away forever. Apply Fitch before wetting hair, rub in one minute. Add water, lather one minute. Rinse one minute. Every trace of dandruff goes down the drain. Three minutes with Fitch, unsightly dandruff's gone. Fitch can also leave your hair up to 35% brighter. Fitch, dandruff remover shampoo. Make yourself comfortable, Mrs. Luciano. And you, Mr. Luciano. Thank you, Mr. Morgan. Haven't I seen you somewhere before? On many a magazine cover, Mr. Morgan. As Mary Gardner, Mrs. Luciano oh, was one of our course, top models. Of course. And as counsel for the agency with whom she's registered, I, uh, well, we need your help. Mm -hmm. I take it it's a matter of assault. The black eye, who gave it to you? My husband, Willie Luciano. Willie, Willie Luciano. That's why we're here, Mr. Morgan. Unless I'm wrong, it was you who prosecuted Miss Gardner's husband on a charge of possession of a gun. And convicted him, yes. Now, I remember. You're married to him, Miss Gardner? He's my second husband. Mr. Gardner was killed in an auto accident. Mm -hmm. I had a little girl and I... Mr. Morgan, the man has begun to beat her, threaten her, threaten the little girl. She's only six, Mr. Morgan, but he hates her. Please, Mary. Mr. Morgan... Miss Gardner is planning to sue for divorce. That is, she is, uh, well, we are seeking divorce grounds. Uh, just a minute, just a minute. Where is your husband now? He ran out of the house. It was five days ago he gave me this beating, and then he ran out of the house. The man's living in a West Side hotel. We're, uh, we're investigating him for evidence of... Uh, well, you know the grounds for divorce in New York State. Well, one moment. This is a civil matter. Why do you come to me? I'm a criminal prosecutor. Well, the point is, my client would like protection against her husband. Well, I can well understand that, but... Protection for herself and for her child. But what do you expect me to do, Mr. Linden? Well, we thought you might, uh, Well, as an assistant district attorney who has already sent him to prison, warn him to, uh... To keep the peace and let the law take its course. The divorce law, that is. Depending on what your investigators come up with. That's right. Perhaps you might cause him to post a bond to keep the peace. Mm -hmm. Have you told him you're divorcing him, Miss Gardner? No, I... I was afraid. Mr. Morgan, believe me, the marks you see on Miss Gardner's face are, are nothing compared to others you do not see. Her body is covered with bruises. Well, I still don't see how I can intervene in a divorce proceeding in which my office is in no way involved. Uh, Mary. Yes, sir. Tell Mr. Morgan, if you would, what you told me this morning. About the... the fight? About the threat. Well, I... I picked Elsie up after school, and, and he was waiting for us. He pushed her into the bedroom, and then he started right in on me again. I'll show you, he said. I'll show you where to get off. When I get through with you, you'll be a good model for one of those liniment ads, before and after. He threatened you with continued bodily harm? Yes. And said he was walking out on you? Yes. But with an implied threat to return and do further harm. Mr. Morgan... Don't you think it would be better to forestall a homicide than to have to go looking for a killer? Yes, yes, I agree with you. Very well. Now, Mr. Linden, I never want to tell a lawyer how to run his case, but 
Pending the results of your own investigations, there is something I can suggest. Yes? That pending evidence of adultery... Now, that's going to be difficult to obtain. This man likes to boast about women, we've discovered, but he has been very circumspect. Meets them only in public places. Well, I can go before a magistrate with you and support an application for a warrant of arrest on the grounds of abandonment. Abandonment? Yes, Mrs. Luciano, abandonment is a crime, a misdemeanor. And if it continues for any length of time, technically, we might be able to prosecute. But, uh... But what? But all he has to do is to give the money for support and the criminal charge is purged for all practical purposes. That's what these wise guys do when they run out on their family, send just enough money to pay the gas bill. Well, then what's all this about? Oh, he'll see me in court. It may have a quieting effect. Also, if you'd like to apply for a bond to keep the peace, I'll go along. I'll suggest high bail in view of his criminal background. And your husband will either fail or make bail. Or be sobered by seeing that you have your eye on him. Mr. Linden. Mr. Morgan. Yes, my dear? But what happens if he doesn't make bail? He's committed to the civil prison. For how long? Until he makes bail. Oh, well, I'm no lawyer, but... If he's in jail, then... How I... can your investigator obtain evidence against him for the divorce? Obviously, he can't. The main thing is, you and your daughter are safe. And if he gets out, on bail, I mean, he'll come after me. Not if he knows the district attorney is interested in the case. Well, we hope. In the meantime, now, this is entirely up to you, Mr. Linden. Your client can sue for a legal separation. It's not much, but it's something. Mr. Linden, honestly, what shall I do? Well, Mary, I do as Mr. Morgan says. The main thing is to protect you and Elsie. We can take each thing in its own time. Now, don't you agree? Oh, I, I guess so. Very well. Uh, Mr. Morgan, is there any necessity of Mary's remaining here? No, no, we no not at all. But uh, you'd better be at my office here tomorrow morning at about a quarter to ten. Court opens then, and we'll go right in there and make application for a warrant of arrest. Quarter to ten. All right. Thank you. In just a moment, we will return for the concluding act of... Suspense. Around the clock. CBS newsrooms are kept humming with a steady influx of incoming dispatches and expanded reports from correspondents around the world. The object, the one object, is to make sure that you are kept completely advised as to the constantly shifting pattern of world events. Here, each day's global developments brought to you swiftly, accurately, and in meaningful detail via CBS News on CBS Radio. Just one question, Mr. Linden. I know. Why did she marry him? Mm -hmm. Love, I suppose. Men like that have an animal attraction for girls like Miss Gardner. Beautiful faces worshipped like, like goddesses by the multitudes. And nobody knows how long they wait by the phone for a date. Mm -hmm. And a healthy young hoodlum like Luciano moves in. Well, uh, I'd better get back to the office. I'll have to prepare an affidavit for tomorrow. Uh, Mr. Linden... Would you mind a suggestion? Please, I, I feel sort of helpless here. A separation action can end in a judgment for stiff alimony. That's a pretty strong weapon when a man's trying to hide his means of livelihood. You might tell your client it can't be a blow-hot, blow-cold proposition. I quite understand. Point is, so must she. It's her main legal club over the man. Now, she's not obliged to let him back into the home, or there goes her case. As for having anything to do with him... I know what you mean. From now on, she'd be better off living in the YWCA. Otherwise, no case. But the main thing right now is to put up a legal wall between her and his fists. You were right. He might kill her. Hi, 
I'll tell you something else we're going to do, Elsie. We're going to take a big, long vacation down in Florida where the sun shines all the time. And we're going to get twin bathing suits like the ones they took pictures of us wearing. And we'll go fishing and swimming. And we'll get so sunburned they won't have to use makeup on us when we go back to work. <laughs> and we'll just laze around the sand all day. And we won't have to worry about what we eat. We'll just get fat. <laughs> Are you, baby? Willie. Did you miss me? All right, kid, hit the road. Come here. Shall we give her another 15 minutes? You can stay here if you like. I have a case in special sessions. But perhaps she went straight to Tony. No, no, no. I made it perfectly clear it was to be here. My office, 945. Morgan. Morgan, this is Mary Gardner Luciano. Oh. Uh oh Yes, Mrs. Luciano. What? Shh. Mrs. Luciano, may I ask where you are? We said my office, quarter to ten. I'm home, Mr. Morgan. I, I couldn't call before this. My husband just left. He just left? But when did he arrive? Last night. I mean, when I got home with Elsie, he was there. Mm. How did he get in? Oh, I don't know. I, I guess maybe he had a key... But I didn't ask. Mr. Morgan... What did he want? He wanted to talk things over. Oh. Mrs. Luciano, tell me one thing. Was there a reconciliation? Uh-huh. Shouldn't there have been? Mrs. Luciano, that's a question you can't ask your district attorney or your lawyer. Only your own heart. Where is your husband now? Shopping mm -hmm. for groceries. You see, we talked it all over, and we're going to give it another try. Oh, gee. Oh, gee is right. Women. What? What's the story? Same old story. When a lovely woman stoops to folly and finds herself deserted and alone, she smooths her hair with automatic hand and welcomes the prodigal husband right back home. By Morgan, out of Goldsmith, or was it Pope? I I can't take as light a view of it as you do, Mr. Morgan. Well, what am I supposed to do? I don't know what went on last night in that happy little love nest, but if the girl wants to be a fool, that's her privilege. But the man's dangerous. The story is this, Mr. Linden. Has it ever occurred to you that some men have only one way of showing their women how much they love them, and that's by beating them up? And another thing, with all due respect to your sagacity, my colleague... How would you feel if Mary Gardner weren't a cover girl, weren't a raving beauty with honey eyes and deeper cheekbones? Just an ordinary girl with an ordinary face. Would you think it was so terrible? Oh, I'm thinking of the child. Now, what kind of a woman will she grow up to be? Seeing her stepfather beat her mother up time and time again, I'm thinking of the child, and so should you be. I am, I am. But the mother's your client. I intend to keep in touch with Mary. Mm hmm. I wondered why a corporation lawyer showed such an interest. All right. So you guessed. All right, Lyndon. I give them six months. The question is in this strange affair of a woman infatuated with an animal like creature. Yeah. What was the name of the fellow in that play? Loved his wife and beat her? Lilium. Lilium. Oh, never mind, Lilium. The question is, at the end of six months, who is going to come out alive? The lady or the tiger? Morgan. Uh, Mr. Morgan, this is John Linden. Yes, Mr. Linden. Well, it's been just about six months, hasn't it? It's to the week. What's happened, Linden? I have a very frightened girl in my office, Morgan. Mary. I'd like to bring her over right now. Well, certainly, certainly. What about the daughter? Well, the child is all right. She was at school. My sister is picking her up. But Luciano's on the loose with a gun. <laughs> Miss Gardner, you're safe here, and your daughter will be escorted by a patrol car. Now, please, go on with your story. Well, that's about all. It's just that 
when I found the gun in his pocket and tried to stop him from going out on this job, he called it. He hit me. He hit me and hit me like an animal, like a wild animal. You say he threatened to come back, and what was his expression? T take care of me. Mm -hmm. He said he'd take care of me for good. Mr. Morgan, he's insane. Then why did you go back to him? Why did you take him back? Oh, I... I couldn't... Morgan, spare the girl. No, no, no. It, it's all right now. I'm, I'm over it. It was just that I couldn't resist him when he just... just even touched me. But it's all over now. I'm cured. You're sure? Yes. I'll do anything you say. I'll sign warrants. I'll go right over to the court. Anything you say. Uh, will you come with me to First Avenue and 33rd Street for ten minutes? Oh, what's over there? Your husband. He went on a robbery job. Liquor store. The dealer had a gun, too. <gasps> Bellevue is at First Avenue and 33rd. Oh, when he's hurt, I know he's hurt. No, no. The morgue is at Bellevue. I'll ask you to identify him, and then you can wipe him out of your life. But you don't understand. Hmm? I hated him. I hated him for what he did to me. But I love him. <laughs> oh, Willie. <laughs> oh, Willie, Willie, what am I going to do with that? You can grow up. <laughs> you can come to your senses and thank your stars somebody killed them before he killed you. That's what you can do. Mary, Women. Dear girl, please. Brother Lyndon, take oh, care of him. We'll skip the identification. I've got his prints on file. Women. Suspense. You've been listening to End of the Road, a story by Eliezer Lipsky, written for radio by Alan Sloan. In a moment, the names of our players and a word about next week's story of suspense. Out of tune because of irregularity? Kellogg's All Brand helps put you back in tune. Kellogg's All Brand is the natural way, the good food way to end constipation caused by lack of bulk in your diet. There's only one All Brand, Kellogg's All Brand. Its whole brand content gentles away constipation, supplies your system with the bulk forming food you need. Kellogg's All Brand is the only whole brand cereal to bring you the combination of proved effectiveness, appetizing taste, and crispness. It never gets mushy in milk. So get back in tune and stay in tune. It's easy with the one and only Kellogg's All Brand. A double L hyphen B R A N. Safe, reliable, pleasant. Millions enjoy it every day. They know they can count on Kellogg's All Brand to relieve irregularity. <laughs> Tonight's story were Bernard Grant as Willie Luciano, Rita Lloyd as Mary Luciano, and Nat Poland as Mr. Morgan. Others in our cast included John Seymour and Rita Sergal. Listen again next week when we return with The Mystery of Marie Roger by Edgar Allan Poe, adapted for radio by E. Jack Newman. Another tale well calculated to keep you in... Suspense. CBS Radio.